Hello viewers, welcome to the third lecture on feedback control. In this lecture, uh, we shall prove the general version of the theorem on feedback control which was discussed in the previous lecture. So, today we will see the following uh, result. First, let us consider the system dx by dt equal to ax plus bu, where A is n cross n matrix, B is n cross m matrix. Let u of t equal to k times x of t be feedback control. It is a feedback control where this matrix k it is a m cross n matrix which is unknown to be found. We have to uh, compute it according to a particular uh, goal. So, u be the feedback control given by this, then the system becomes let us call it as system 1. x dot equal to a plus b k times x. So, now let us consider a set, let s be a set of numbers mu 1, mu 2, etcetera, mu n set of numbers real or complex. So, now we want to prove this theorem the last lecture it was proved for a particular case that is when the matrix B is a n cross 1 matrix, a column matrix only. Now, we will prove this theorem for a general case where B is a n cross m matrix. So, here the theorem is uh, if the system 1 is controllable. then we can find the matrix K such that the set of eigenvalues of a plus b k is precisely the set S. So, the theorem is any given arbitrary set S, we can find a matrix K. So, that A plus b k has these eigenvalues mu 1, mu 2, etcetera, mu n provided the system is controllable. So, it is a very useful theorem in many practical situations. As we mentioned earlier, if you want to stabilize this system, then we require that all the eigenvalues should have negative real part. So, if already the system is not stable, then by selecting this all this mu i as some negative number or with negative real part, we can make the system to be a stable system. So, so, now we will before proving the theorem, let us construct the following matrices. So, first this matrix U, it is the first block is B, the second block is A B, A square B, etcetera, A power n minus 1 B. So, this is already known to us, it is a n cross 
m into n matrix the rank of u equal to n because the system is controllable. So, that is already given fact. Now, we will consider, so let the matrix B, the first column is B1, the second column is B2 and the M the column is Bm. So, it is already given that it is a N cross M matrix, so this matrix is given. So, now let us consider the first vector B1, B, the column vector. If it is completely 0, then we will omit it and then go to the next one. But let us assume that B1 has at least one non-zero entry. So, consider B1 which is a non-zero vector, okay, the first vector. Now, we consider let A into B1, A see the first column of the first block, B is B1. The first column of the second block A B, that is A into the first column of B is B1. So, A into B1 will give the first column of the second block. Then A square into B1 will give the first column of the third block. So, what we will do is we will select n such block, say n such column vectors from each block one by one. So, let A B1, A square B1, etc., A to the power R1 minus 1. So, we will go up to the step R1 minus 1 like this. From each block, we will select the first column okay, like this. So, this be linearly independent B1, A B1, A square B1 up to this be linearly independent. And then the next entry A power R1 into B1, the next one that we assume to be linearly dependent. So, wherever it becomes linearly dependent, we give that number as R1, okay. A to the power R1 into B1, B linearly dependent on all these um, columns B1, AB1, etc., A power R1 minus 1. So, for, for example, let us say AB1 itself is the multiple of B1, that means R1 equal to 1 in that case. Okay. So, like that we uh, have the number R1. So, we have now R1 such vectors B1, AB1, A square B1 up to this one, these are all linearly independent. The next num next vector has become linearly dependent. So, what we will do? We will start with the second column of the first block. B2 is the second column. So, then we consider let B2 A B2 etcetera A power R2 minus 1 into B2. So, the second column of each block we are now selecting. So, let us assume that these are all linearly independent of all this uh, uh, this thing, linearly independent set, okay. linearly independent of all the previous entries of all previous vectors or that, that means we have the set B1, AB1, A power R1 minus 1 already and then 
we have b2 a b2 etc a power r2 minus 1 so all this set the, the entire set is linearly independent then the next entry is linearly dependent that is uh, if you take a power r2 into b2 that will be linearly dependent uh, on all these entries okay and a to the power r2 into b2 is linearly dependent on the above set so we cannot go to the next entry what we will do we will take the third column of the first block b3 and then third column of the second block a b3 etc so proceed in the same manner we will get a so it cannot go beyond n such vectors we can it, it will not go indefinitely because total number of column is n into m and the rank of the matrix is n so there will be only n linearly independent columns available for this matrix so in this procedure uh, we can select only n linearly independent such columns so uh, we will construct a square matrix m m b equal to its first column is b1 the second column is a b1 and a power r1 minus 1 into b1 is the r1 th column then the next column is b2 then a b2 a power r2 minus 1 b2 so after that uh, it will become linearly dependent therefore we will start with b3 a b3 etc so we can go up to n such uh, columns okay. all of them are columns so it is a n cross n matrix square matrix here and this will be invertible because the rank is n we, are, we have all linearly independent columns so m is invertible so m inverse will exist so this will imply m inverse m is identity isn't it so that will imply m inverse into b1 will be m inverse into the first column will be 1 0 0 etc so like that m inverse into for example the a power r1 minus 1 into b1 if you multiply the r1 th, this is the first column second this is r1 th column and like this this will be r1 plus r2 column etc finally we'll get the nth column so if you multiply the r1 column with the m inverse we will get 0 0 1 0 at the r1 position one will be in the r1 position similarly each column can be multiplied and we will get this vector isn't it so this matrix m is constructed in this fashion so we note that if the first r1 is linearly independent we select b2 but if b2 is linearly independent of all the previous columns what we will do we will put here b3 and then a b3 etc so whichever column is linearly independent that we will put here it is not necessary that after b1 we will put b2 uh, okay. so now using this matrix let us construct the matrix n okay how to construct the n matrix we will write in the r 1th column we will put all the columns are zeros
and R 1th column is 0 1 0 0 okay, because the next entry we are going to put B 2. So, we will put the second entry to be 1 and all the entry to be 0, but in case we are putting here B 3 because B 2 becomes linearly dependent we want to put B 3 here and it, it is linearly independent in that case you should put 0 0 1 here in this position. So, whichever uh, 2 or 3 whatever it is at that position 1 is written and re remaining vectors are 0 column vectors. So, this is the R 1th position. Then R 1 plus R 2th position what we get is next is becoming B 3 is not it. So, in this position we will put 0 0 1, but if it is going to be B 4 then we should put 0 0 0 1. Okay. So, uh, depending on what is appearing in this position we have to write okay. so etcetera. So, this is a M cross N matrix. Okay, the number of rows should be m and column should be m because we are constructing it from the matrix m. So, there should be m n columns and number of rows we just put it as m. So, using this n and m we will construct the matrix. Now, let a matrix k 1 which is equal to n into m inverse okay. because m is a invertible matrix we write like this this matrix. Now, we will prove the following result using this uh, matrices. So, we will write this following lemma consider the control system we construct a new control system which is given by x dot equal to a plus b k 1 into x plus b 1 into v of t. The control function is V and the we normally have x dot equal to A x plus B u. Here in the place of A we have A plus B k 1 it is a n cross n matrix because uh, here n is m cross n this is this thing therefore, this matrix is m cross n and B is a n cross m. So, the product will give a n cross n after adding we will get a square matrix n cross n ok. And then B 1 is a column simply the first column of the B matrix. So, it is the n cross 1 matrix. So, what we obtain is a stand the uh, thing which we have considered in the last lecture where the control matrix is a single column vector. Now, we can make use of the previous theorem in this one, but before proving that we will prove this lemma. Consider the control system this one two. Okay. consider the system. So, if k 1 is uh, let us call it as the equation 2. So, if k 1 is defined by 2. then the system if you call it as 3 is controllable. Okay, so, this is the uh, lemma through which we will prove the main theorem. Okay. So, or in other words what we want to prove we want to prove that that is the rank of B 1 the column B 1 A plus B k 1 
into b1 etc a plus b k1 power n minus 1 into b1. So, we have n such column this rank should be equal to n. If we prove this then the system is controllable. After this we will make use of the previous theorem to show the main result of the theorem. So, first we will prove that this rank of this matrix is n. So, the first column is B1, okay. the second one is A plus B k 1 into B 1. We want to show that this entry is linearly independent of the first entry B 1 okay, is the first column. This is the second column we want this to be linearly independent of the first column. So, if you multiply it it is A B 1 plus B k 1 is n into m inverse into b 1 and it is a b 1 plus b into the n matrix we know that m inverse into b 1 which we saw m inverse into b 1 is 1 0 0 etcetera. Now, if you multiply 1 0 0 with this n matrix, if you multiply here 1 0 0 etcetera, you can easily see that all the entries will be 0, okay, the product is 0. So, n into this vector it is equal to 0. So, ultimately we will get only a into b 1 for the product. So, we already know that b 1 and a b 1 both are linearly independent uh, the, from the construction. Now, the, the next entry is a plus b k 1 whole square into b 1. So, is it linearly independent of the previous two? So, it is nothing but a plus b k 1 multiplied by a plus b k 1 into b 1 the previous one. So, that is a b 1 ok. So, that will give a square into b 1 plus b n m inverse k 1 is n into m inverse into a b 1. So, it is a square b 1 plus b into n m inverse into a b 1 that is given as 0 1 the second entry will be 1 here all the other entries will be 0 0 1 0 0 etcetera. So, if you multiply 0 1 0 0 with n this matrix 0 1 0 0 you will see that in the second place always 0 comes therefore, you do not get anything you will get again a 0 vector only. So, this into this will be 0 therefore, we will get only a square b 1 and already we know that a square b 1 is independent of a b 1 and b 1 etcetera. So, up to this stage a plus b k 1 to the power r 1 into b 1. If you see this we will get this expression will be a to the power up to r 1 minus 1 we will get uh, this expression in the same way. Now, we will get a to the power let us say r 1 minus 1 b 1 we will get a power r 1 minus 1 into b 1 only because if you do the induction we will get square means here square we will get this expression plus the remaining 
things we will get. Okay. So, again you can conclude that it will become 0, but the next one A plus B k 1 into R 1 into B 1 that will be A plus B k 1 into A power R 1 minus 1 into B 1, because up to the previous one we got this. So, only the 1 power we will take out. So, this gives A power R 1 into B 1 plus B k 1 multiplied by A power R 1 minus 1 into B 1, is not it. Here we see that A power R 1 into B 1 is dependent on all the previous entries B 1, A B 1 etcetera, is not it. So, the second term has to be linearly independent, otherwise if both of them are linearly dependent on the previous one, it is uh, not, uh, the, then the system is not controllable. So, the first term is dependent, but let us show that the second term is independent of all the previous ones. So, it will be A to the power R 1 into B 1, okay, because we have seen this matrix is constructed A power R 1 into B 1 is dependent that is why we did not include it here, is not it. So, this expression plus B times K 1 is N into M inverse multiplied by A power R 1 minus 1 into B 1. So, if you see that M 1 into this is the R R 1 th column of the matrix M, this one A power R 1 minus 1 into B 1 is the R 1 column. So, if you multiply M inverse into R 1 th column, you will get in the R 1 th position the number 1, all other will be 0, is not it, because of the inverse property. So, we will get it here A power R 1 into B 1 is as it is, B is this, N is this, but the product of M inverse into this will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. In the R 1 th position 1 will appear and then the product of this 2 will give what is N? N, N has if you observe the second row in the R 1 th position you have 1 here, in the second row in the R 1 th column you have 1, others are 0. And so, if you multiply 0, 0, 1 in the R 1 th position, when you multiply the second row and this column you will get 1 in that place, is not it. So, this will give A power R 1 into B 1 plus B into 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. The second row and this column will give the element 1, baki sub 0, uh, uh, therefore, you will get this expression. So, if you multiply B into this, you will get the vector B 2, B into 0, 1, 0, 0. It is uh, first column is B 1, second is B 2, etcetera. So, finally, you will get the vector B 2. So, what we get is A plus B k 1 to the power R 1 into B 1 is nothing but A to the power R 1 into B 1 plus B 2 we will get okay, this expression. So, even though this is linearly dependent on all the B 1, A B 1 etcetera but B 2 is independent of all this. So, this is linearly independent of the previous vectors. Okay. So, now if you proceed further in the same manner, you will simply get all the entries are similarly we can show that.
So, for example, what we will get is R1 plus R2 position, we will get a B3 in the same similar procedure. So, B3 will be independent of all the previous etcetera. So, okay. so, this implies you can show that the rank of B1 A plus B k 1 into B1 etcetera A plus B k 1 to the power n minus 1 B1 is n here. Okay. So, this implies the system is controllable. Okay. Uh, system 3 is controllable system. So, uh, let us see here an example and then we will prove the theorem. So, for example, let us consider the matrix A, A to be 1 0 0 0 matrix is 1 0 1 and 0 1 minus 1 okay and let us say the b matrix is 1 2 1 and 0 1 1 so this system is controllable you can say b a b a square b it is a 3 by 3 matrix so we should see that rank of B this first block A B A square B equal to 3 because it is a 3 cross 6 matrix we will get and rank is 3. So, this implies the system is controllable. Now, we want to construct the whatever is given in this matrix we want to construct this thing. We want to construct the M matrix first. So, we will take B1, A B1, A square B1, whichever is linearly dependent, we have to omit them first. So, the matrix M, the first column is B1, 1, 2, 1, and if you multiply A into B1, we will get first row into first column is 1 and then the second is 2 and then third will get 1. So, A into B 1 is like this. So, it is same as B 1 itself, okay. the first one. Therefore, we should not take this A into B 1, then we should put B 2. 0, 1, 1 and these two are linearly independent B 2 and B 1. So, we can take it as it is. Then we should put A B 2. If it is, uh, it has to be linearly independent otherwise there is no column available. So, A into B 2, if we multiply it is 1, the first one, the second one is 1, the third is 0. Okay. So, it is a 3 by 3 matrix and the rank is uh, 3, so it is invertible. Okay. Now, from here we have to construct n matrix. This will be a 2 by 3 matrix, is not it? We have to, uh, it is a m cross n matrix, so 2 by 3. Now, you can see that R 1 equal to 1 here in this case, because next B 1, A B 1 itself has become independent, uh, dependent. Therefore, 
r1 equal to 1 because a power r1 minus 1 into b1 up to this they are linearly independent. So, when you put this is r1 is 1 we get simply b1. So, r 1th position is 1 here therefore, we have to put 0 1 okay. according to the construction of n matrix the r 1th position should have 0 1 if the next entry is b 2. So, r 1th position is this then 0 0 the next position we have to put 0 0 1. But because there is no other uh, third uh, row available, it should be 0, 0 only. So, n matrix is only this much. Now, we have to construct k 1 matrix, it is n into m inverse. So, if we compute this k 1 matrix. After computing all the inverse etcetera, we can get again this also to be the same 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. We get the similar as it n itself we will get. Okay. So, now we will construct A plus B into K 1. A is given, B is given, K 1 is given. So, after doing all this multiplication we will get 1 0 0 then 2 0 0 2 0 1 and 1 1 minus 1 after cons computing all these values we will get this one and then we can easily check x dot equal to this a plus b k 1 into x plus b 1, b 1 matrix is 1 to 1 into the control as a notation for control we take it as v of t. So, is controllable. So, we can check numerically uh, the B 1 and uh, the Kalman condition can be checked for this. So, it will be controllable. So, this system it is in the standard form that what whatever we have proved in the previous lecture uh, for the feedback control it is in the same form. So, we can convert it into the companion form and then compute the control for the system. So, the proof of the main theorem we will prove it in the next class and then uh, how to construct the control also we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.